Welcome to www.findingbraids.com. Feel free to check out my blog at The Braid Zone. Today we are going to do a video on the classics. Classic is one form in my book, a different approach to hair braiding. The classic is one of 12 forms that I work with in the book. Feel free to go to page 398. And it starts with the basic classic. And we're going to do a three strand. Any classic has a tendency to start with a part down the middle. It can be a straight part, zigzag part, square part, curvy part. But it also does not have to be straight down the middle or um, zigzag down the middle. They can be off center. They can start. Um, on one side of the head or the other, then go upside down, backwards. It's up to you to use the classic form however you choose to use it. So today the video will just be on the standard non-variety um, classic form. We pick a, pick a side, so here in the video I'm doing the right side, and I started at the top of the head, at the top of the forehead, and just took a section, started braiding with a three strand braid. I'm taking my gathers tidy, neat, small, and with a straight line. That's because I personally prefer that kind of a look. I know uh, the trendier look today is a messier, bulkier, vol more volume. And you can do that. Take your gathers however you want. The only thing that matters here in this video is that we are doing the classic form which is two braids starting at the front, braiding to the back, and ending in a bun. And that's only because we're not doing variations on the classic form. So uh, once you get behind the ear, you'll notice that the gathers are going straight up into the braid. The braid along the back, the braid is going to be horizontal. So in the, in the beginning, you braid towards the ear, bring it around the side of the head. Your braids are, uh, gathers are slightly slanted back. And then once you reach the back corner, back right corner of the head, your gather is going to go straight up into the braid and the braid is going to be horizontal. So that if you were to let go, that braid would be uh, the same line as in line with the floor, so be going from side to side, left to right. And it will be put in a bun at the back of the head. That's why you want to aim it up at the back there. And the second side is going to do the same thing, so just create the second side to match the first side. And again, that's because we're not doing a variation, we're just just doing the classic form. So I like to line up and match my gathers. So I will find where I took the gap, the first section on the right side and I will match that on the left side. And start braiding with the top of the forehead, just three strand braids, and try to aim as you're braiding and gathering and braiding and gathering, aim towards the ear. So you wanna bring it down kind of near the, the face line, and then swoop it back and around just above the ear until it's going horizontally back towards the back of the head. Notice how the gathers are slanted, um, going towards the back of the head, and that's just because of the direction that you're braiding, you're going down towards her ear. And then just a slight shift of the hand, and you can turn that braid to, to angle it towards the back of the head. Again, match those gathers. Um, if you're taking a gather on the right side, take it in the same place on the left side. And that's just for symmetry, beauty, everything will match then. Once you're behind the ear again, take your gathers straight up into the braid and make sure that braid is horizontal. 
match your gather pattern from the left side to the right side so everything is consistent and even. A lot of people when they braid um, complain that their braids come out loose. They don't know how to get them tighter. The key to getting a tight braid is not pulling tighter. It's not um, holding it tighter. It's keeping your hands closer to the head. If your hands are far away from the head, then there's going to be a slack in your braid. So as you bring that braid horizontal across the back of the head, the closer you keep your hands to that person's head, the tighter the braid will be. And I physically touch their head. My knuckles are actually on her scalp. Take your last gather just at the very back. If your gathers are too big, then you won't have the closing flaps on the left and right side to cover the back bottom part. So that top part is going to show. That's just the top straight part. And the bottom part is not going to show. You want to close the bottom part, cover it with the last gather from the bottom on each side. Kind of close it like a door, close it like a flap. Use the flap of the last gather to cover, cover that part. To me, that bottom part, that bottom scalp line, is kind of like a, like a butt crack. You want to cover it with the hair. You want those things to, to not show. And then the bobby pins and rubber bands are kind of like the underwear of a braid. You want to hide the bobby pins inside the braid, inside the hair. You don't want the butt of the bobby pins catching hair on the outside and showing. You just want to insert those inside of the hairline and hide them. Let them do their work inside, not on the surface. And I love using gems and flowers to decorate. So if you have any of those, just pop those in the braid. And you have what I, what I refer to as a basic classic. All the hair up into the classic form. When somebody does a lot of work online, I like to honor that. So page 400 shows the accented classics. So that's the same classic we just did, only this time we're going to incorporate some accents. So again, I'm doing a three strand. I'm starting with the basic, um, basic classic form. We're doing a straight part down the center, and I'm starting at the top of the forehead. Take a small section. Start braiding and angle that down towards the ear again. So because we already saw the basic form, I am going to speed this up and just kind of get through, through the basic part. When we get to the accents, I'll slow it down. All right, so we're taking neat, tidy gathers. And somewhere just behind the ear, reach up underneath the braid. Grab the hair that's under the braid. Pinch out as much or as little as you think you'll need for your accent. And just set it aside. She can hold it for you. You can pin it. You can just flop it over if it's long enough. It doesn't really matter. And then ignore it. Pretend it's not there and keep braiding. Your accent hair should not interfere with your braiding and your braiding should not interfere with taking accents. Um, just keep taking gathers. And anywhere you know you want an accent placed is where you take it out. So I take mine out from underneath the braid in this particular hairstyle. Set the accent aside and then just keep braiding. Because I'm at the back of the head now, these gathers are going straight up into the braid. The braid itself again along the back is horizontal because I want to create a bun in the back of the head. Not at the nape of the neck, not, not too high, but just smack in the middle of the back. 
and you can see those two accent pieces. They're like magic. It's hard to tell where they come from. There's no part line leading to them. There's no scalp showing, no gap. They just uh, pop out of nowhere. And for this hairstyle, we're going to do the identical thing on the other side. We're going to make it symmetrical and we're going to make it match, which can be tricky. Taking accents in the same place on both sides um, is not always the easiest thing in the world. So you do want to try to keep track of that as you're going. So I'm starting at the top of the forehead again, just taking a section lining it up with the right side and then each gather that I take I'm also lining up to the gathers that I've taken on the right side it's for a neat crisp clean tidy look and everything matches and is symmetrical I'm braiding angling towards her ear and then we'll turn the braid and go horizontal across the back once I'm behind the ears I am taking the gather straight up into the braid. And when we get to the same place on the left side that we were on the right when we took accents, we will take accents in the same place on this side. So just up underneath that braid, grab the hair, and flip it aside or pin it aside or ask her to hold it, and continue braiding as if nothing happened. Your accents should not interfere with the shape of the form. And again, reach up underneath the braid, pull out that accent here, and set it aside. Continue gathering as if nothing happened. Just keep taking those gathers up into the braid. Make sure the braid is going horizontal to the uh, across the back of the head. And we are going to create a bun the same on this one as we did on the previous one. So we have four accent strands that we're going to use in this hairstyle. They pop out of nowhere. It looks like magic. There's no part lines. There's no gaps. There's no scalp showing around them. They're just popping out of the braid. So to make the bun, I roll up the tails towards each other. So the tail that is from the left side braid rolls in towards the left side of the head. And the braid from the right side of the head, that tail rolls up in towards itself, towards the right side, which is then facing the tail that came from the left side. So I cross the tails and then roll them in towards each other. And that just create, creates a cute, sweet little heart-shaped bun. You can create any kind of shaped bun you want. They can be heart stars, Celtic designs, infinity designs, butterflies, anything that you want. Um, you can manipulate those tails to take on any shape that you want. So this is the basic form, the classic, basic classic form. All the hair is up in, except this one is accented. So I call this the accented classic. And you can accent it with anything. These I'm doing two strand knots, so I'm tying knots in all four of these strands. So I take a strand, break it into two, tie knots. But you can do anything. I mean, there's thousands of different accents that you could create using these hair strands. Um, I'm not sure what's referenced in the book, but if you have the book, you can take a look and see. The nice thing about any of the forms that I work with and any of the accents that I work with is they're all interchangeable. You can mix and match them like puzzle pieces. They don't, um, like puzzle pieces, they all fit together, but unlike puzzle pieces, they don't have to, you don't have to only use knots on a classic. You can use knots on the halo and the single. You can use crochet on all of them. All accents are interchangeable with all forms.
So I took the rubber bands, tucked them underneath the braid, and bobby pinned them. So those ac not accents are just bent in half and pinned in place. Next we're going to do a classic cascade. Classic cascade is just your basic classic form with half the hair left down in the back. So we've got the same part, just a straight part down the middle. And we're going to start in the same spot, even though she has bangs. Bangs don't interfere with forms. I've never had bangs get in my way. And we'll just braid around them. And we're creating the same basic classic form. But when we get behind the ear, instead of taking out accent strands, we're going to take out cascade pieces. And the way we do that is taking up three quarters of your gather and handing it to the person or pinning it aside or clipping it aside. And then you just take up the remaining quarter. From the top, you take your usual gather, just, just the, the same size as always, and then the bottom, it's the same size as always except three quarters of it goes aside and hangs down and then a quarter of it goes up into the braid. There is a difference here with the cascade versus get the gathers in the first two. So in a cascade, you again do not want the scalp to show, you don't want those lines um, those gather lines, scalp lines to show you don't want um, the cracks in the braid to show. And the best way for that, give an ever so slight angle to those gathers. What you're handing to her should, because you're coming from the right side and braiding to the left, those gathers should just have the slightest hint of an angle towards the left so that if 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 a gather is a rectangle what she's holding the top left side of her triangle gather or her rectangle gather will hang down so over gathering the part should not line. affect so you don't the cascade, want the scalp to show you don't want lines of gathering. scalp showing and across the back the cascade should not affect the shape of the form so it should look identical to the basic, only half the hair is down. And we're going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. We're going to repeat the same thing Just on the left side. You want to try to make it match. The very first part. So find the line first section. section that and you took from the right side. Match it on the left side. Start braiding at the and top of the forehead. Down towards her ear. Angle that braid towards the ear. Back towards the back of the head and make sure it's horizontal. So some of the fun things you can do as a variation of course would be to start in a different right, that place instead of starting around the, the side of the head of angling the towards the back you center. Start at the template place the bun further down by the corner of the eye. consistent look match your left curve. gather line pattern with your right Start the side ear, gather pattern. Curve. Bring the braid up so it spirals And once you get behind the ear, the take the three quarters of the gather, down and hand it to her. This time because we're coming from the left side the braid and braiding circle, towards the right, we're going to give a slight angle towards the right. The that way the top side. right side of that gather is going to hang down and cover and the and part line so there's no well. Just cracks in the braid, there's no lines, scalp the lines line. showing. So feel free to, to get fun with this and create different variations. Take up lines. three quarters and hand so it to her. Cascade again, take it up aside. three quarters. And, and the remaining the quarter line. of that gather is to, to go up part. into the braid. And then working in the back of the head. That the quarter cascade, of the gather sure anchors the braid up. to the head. So you don't have a floppy, flapping braid in the back. Try to make sure that it's an actual French braid all the way around. It it's attached, anchored, um, is solid. That's what I like about this, this type of cascade. You can only braid from the top and leave all the back down, but 
each it has a different look it has a different feel this maker. is a lot more sophisticated so a lot more really elegant a lot more intricate a lot more detailed and it's not that so hard to create say, yes i cascaded it and you can see a distinct difference just like the previous the two styles we are going to cross the tails a big line across the back and then roll them you in towards down. each other slivering up a quarter of each gather and then the braid looks more like magic more magical people can't figure out how you did it and it's like it's it can be a lot prettier if you're taking up and it anchors so the entire back of the braid is anchored to the head there's nothing loose there's nothing flapping so it's a it's a logical way to continue that braid across the back and the crown. And I do love I to love use flowers, gems, pearl right. pins, sparkles. Most of the times I use it really pearls. brings out the braid. Gems. The final one today Lastly, is accented, accented classic, classic cascade. cascade. So half the same as done. all a straight same part down the center. And we're and gonna we're just gonna toss some accents on braid the classic form. We're going to leave out the cascade in this one, and then we're going to use pieces of that cascade to create accents. That first section that you take, it doesn't matter how big it is. You can take it large, you can take it small. Um, if you're going for a tight, tidy, intricate little look, then take a, a little one. If you're going for a big, loose, romantic look, then you take a big old section. It's up to you. I also want to point out that any of these this forms in the book can be done with any strands. number strand. So oh, far, we've great. been doing three strands and that's on this not classic. Affect the shape. Right now, I'm going to do a seven strand. Seven strands right this so video does not you. teach how to do a seven how strand. I'm not going to teach strands. you how to braid with seven this pieces a, of hair. This is a video. Um, you can find lots of videos thing. online, do and I have several. So you can just search my channel and find the seven strand braid and then apply you that the to the classic and form. Apply that to uh, classic you can do the same thing with a one strand twist, two strand knot, two strand rope, two strand herring bone, four strand, four strand, four strand so round, five, six, seven, eight, eight nine strands. Strand so first. this classic form and can be done with any number, it doesn't matter. And right now I'm doing the seven and strand. The but the point of the video is just to show you the classic shape. Any so if you want to do this with seven strands, go find a video, learn the seven strand, come back here, and then apply it to this classic shape. Strand and we started braiding at the top of the forehead. Strand. We're angling down and towards the ear. The, the classic we'll form that will around always the have side the same of the shape. Head. It'll always be the same form. As it braids across the back of the head, it's ear. going to be horizontal. Lays horizontal across the, the back. same as it's just the a two and three previous. It's a completely different look. Um, it's the simplest way to change hairstyles every day with the least amount of thought on your part. So feel free to go through my videos, find the different strand numbers, learn them, and then apply them to your uh, to your forms. And every form can be done with these four basic um, steps. You can do them. Each form has a basic. And because this is a classic cascade, we will. Each form has cascade. cascade. And each so just behind the ear. Cascade. Take three so quarters four, of gather. Four different variables that you set it aside. Each form. You don't pin it. So we are going to cascade this one to hand it to a three quarters. And then the last gather, quarter of that gather is for the braid. Client, so it goes up into the braid. Quarters for you. so you'll notice, notice there's, there's an ever so slight braided into the angle braid. of the gathering. We're not going straight up just because like it's a cascade. We're giving it just a slight angle to the left because we're on the right side. And we want the cascade to then cover its own part line, cover the scalp. We don't want any and scalp sure showing. The back of the braid horizontal across the back of the head. You don't have to take out separate accent strands, even though this braid One is. One of the reasons seated. I encourage you to use different numbers of strands pieces. when you're braiding, like this classic. Making sure that I definitely um, hand her three quarters. Is so that we're not all wearing the same hairstyle. Depending on the not look, one of those people on that want to teach you how to do Sometimes a specific hairstyle so that the whole world is wearing the same thing and everybody looks alike. The, 
That was not my goal. In fact, hopefully you won't recreate this specific hairstyle. <laughs> hopefully you'll do a different accent, and you'll do a different strand number, and you'll make it your own. You'll place the accents in a different way or a different place, and and you'll add your personality. The person's hair you're braiding, you'll add their personality, and you'll make it your own. I mean, it's great to recreate a hairstyle the first time just because you're learning, but out in the world, uh, when Another a teacher sees something that they've taught, there, uh, it would be horrible it if a thousand like people were all walking around up. with the same hairstyle. I mean, that would be so incredibly boring. So do this with a rope. Do this with a knot. If it was do it with a herringbone. Do a different accent than what I'm doing. Um, start it differently. Maybe start it at the ear and curve it around like a spiral. And, uh, do it slanted, uh, zigzag part, square part. It's like anything you can think of to make it different, make it unique, make it your own. That's, that's what I want. As a teacher, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to go out into the world and see thousands of different hairstyles, completely unique, all of their own. That would make me the happiest. The very top left side has some hairs to cover. And again, make sure that back braid, the ba braid along the back of the head, I'm is sure horizontal. That so you know and is aiming towards the back of the head. But it's lying you want the bun to be sense. placed. If you're on the right side, give it ever so slightly of a tug to the left. So the most fall and most drop. You want those the part lines to the part be covered line. along the back. And that's because she had them so to the right side. Pull so to the left. The gathers and pull the, the cascade, the top, the top of those cascades, gather, pull them to the left, and that way they will cover the scalp so lines. Disappears, and you've got this smooth, perfect look. This smooth, perfect cascade. In the whole the back of that braid, no not the tail, tail, but the back braid is anchored, so it's secure. It's good, head, solid uh, braid. Cracks in the sidewalk. Um, you can't see the scalp. You can't see this line going up, which can be unattractive sometimes. So I like to I like to cover as much of that as possible. So the braid goes down. So as you can see, this braid follows the same line that the other three did. Even though it's seven strands, like you're still creating thing. the classic form. And so the number of strands that repeat you with should not affect the form. On the left side, what we did on the right side. Find the same spot that I started. Section it off. We'll keep those gather lines in line with each other so it's symmetrical. And again, that's only because we're not doing variations. And that's you only could do a herringbone on this side now. And Obviously, if you want a different look, it could look really cool. Be able to do it's up anything to you. you want with this Add part. your personality to it. And the last thing I want to do is tell you how to do your hairstyles. I think that makes for an extremely boring world. My hope with this video is that you'll learn the classic form. So I started the and top of the forehead it's and I'm angling my braid towards her ear. Accented, cascade, I'm going to braid in a curve around the side of her head. I think the best and as we go towards the back of the head, we will then become horizontal. So, so take turn this your hands in a manner and that allow the braid to be braided something horizontally creative. across the back Say, wow, of that's her really head. great that she can do that, and that's awesome. But my personality is thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful if we started it in a different place, or if we gave it a, a, a different curve or look or feel, and then do it. So... The more variety in the world, the more awesome it is to walk down the street and see all the cool different hairstyles. If we all wore the same hairstyle, like to line up incredibly dumb. My gather patterns slope yeah, the left wouldn't side make for matches very the right side. So take this. Take this and run with it. Do something different with it. Do something creative. The, the reason I'm showing this to you isn't so that everyone I see walking down the street is going to have a seven-strand classic cascade. It's time cascade. to gather. Crochet Make sure you leave out three quarters of the gather. The last thing I want. Either pin it aside, set it aside, <laughs> to do something flop funny. it over her head, or hand so. it to her. So to get and that cascade look, of that gather is for because we're on the left anchors, side. The braid I'm doing all along the back so of the head, so that it's solid, tight, right. secure. She could sleep in so it if she wanted to. There's not this loose of a flap of a braid across the back with a line of cascade hanging down. It's more like an intricate pattern. Um, and it's secure. I'm 
make sure when you take those gathers. One of the ways that I get my braids so tight is by holding my hands line up, line for close line to the person's head. The the head. I don't braid with any don't space forget, like said, between my knuckles parts, and their scalp. Parts, my hands are physically so touching their head as I braid. Exactly I don't have to hold really square, tight. I don't have to pull. Curve, my clients angles, don't complain that I'm hurting them because I'm not the yanking or pulling or, or holding anything really so tight. All I'm doing is keeping my hands physically size. attached Valued. or physically resting mm -hmm. on, Some physically of the lying on your head. Variations. And her three quarters of the gather. Um, it does and require sliver up that last quarter up into the braid again. to anchor it to the head. It can be so much more fun to do deviations on what you like. So feel free to play with this. It makes it so much more fun to see. It makes it so much more fun to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I guess I should plug my book. There is a book. It's a big book, 500 pages. And again, with these um, gather, teaches this form. Um, gather patterns of the cascade across the back. This video. Is because it's yeah. cascade and I so want the cascade book, itself um, to cover its own part you line. Thinking to yourself, and wow, on the left side really of the head, I do give it a ever so slight right and there angle. Are so I sliver up each of the forms angling a little bit to the right um, so that the top well, right side of yet, the rectangle of what she's holding double. will drape down over its own part line. the heart and the halo. So there are many videos up to go with the book. Soon there will be all of the videos. Soon there will be a video for each page in the book. Um, so this is the one that goes with the classic. And if you don't have the book, why would you want a book when you can get this video for free here online? Um, I don't know. I personally like books. I like if I'm going to the neighbor's house, I like to be able to pull out a book and say, these are the things I can do. Or these are kind of the things I can kind of do. <laughs> Let the person look through them and pick stuff. or It makes it easier to have a conversation. It makes it easier to remember all the stuff you can do. And having to constantly remember where a video is when, you're, when you've are when you watched a hundred videos, to be able to pull out a book and say, all right, these are One things I've done. One way that I like I've to seen. use the tail of the braid is gives a for creating not more than books where the video is, in where all four of these styles. YouTube, Facebook, if it was a three strand, Pinterest. then the tail was three strand. It just this gives one you is a seven strand, the tail is seven strand. It makes it but easier frequently to share. when I'm doing clients. Um, um, I try to listen to, to what kind of feel they're going for, it's maybe what their dress so is, what the event is. And I like to change the strand number. So it's also fun to be able to sit Say if she had a special occasion she was going to, Instead of braiding that tail out not into a seven strand all the way down, the I might time. knot it's it so that the bun on the back of her head was a pile of curled knots. Than it is tail. So the tails are a great place that. for uh, making a hairstyle. Feel free to get the book Notice how there's no on. scalp down there. All that scalp is covered by so the you cascade. The tails. One goes you want your cascade gathering one. patterns to do that, to hide their Roll own part lines. Cross the braid tails, each other into roll them in towards each other, and pin it in place. This is, because it's a seven strand braid, this is going to be a very, very big bun. And that's the look that we're going for. We want something that kind of spans the back, entire back of the head. Take that tail. This roll seven roll strand makes a pretty place. massive bun. That's another reason why I usually do not braid out the tail just on a seven strand. It does make for quite the volume the on the back of the head, which can be nice see. depending on the dress, the style, just the occasion. It can be beautiful and gorgeous, it. but and it's not always appropriate. If it's not appropriate, to change the strand number, scale. do a five strand or a three strand or knots or ropes. It'll give you a different look, a different feel. It'll change the entire back of that hairstyle. And sew it together um, with some hair from. But the, the style itself. we're doing today is calls so for a is massive again, bunny cascade. back. So the and that's what the seven strand does. Cascades, so these are two so different cascades. cascade. And from the cascade, we will just take some accent strand hairs. So just take a 
Today, on this Section one, I am doing crochet. You can do anything you want. Do the, do the knots. The first the accented video we did here. Pretzels, this rosettes, photo we loose, did one loose hair. Knots. Um, you could you curl know, along the back. Just get a curling iron and curl that whole crochet. back section. Crochet mm. is best. With her, her hair's down to her, her butt. You can't really see her that. Butt. But really crochets are so video. much but fun with long hair. Notice that. Hair down to your butt gives you a crochet that's about three inches long. You can do crochets on short hair. I usually don't. It's possible, you just have to I get do creative with it. Down to her butt. Um, I like to use really long hair for crochet because it gives you a big, fat, bulky, visible, you can do it with shorter gorgeous hair. crochet you're just gonna to work get a, with. A tinier, smaller, little, little crochet. She's and there's the fun things you can crochet. do. I would never say, oh, don't do this on short hair. And what I would do, again, what I would say, a is you're not going to get It's up to you, big, it's up to person's hair that you're braiding. If you do it's up to the personal taste. Of the creator the and the receiver on what they want to do with those accents, and where they want to place them, the how they want them to created, look, how big or bulky they're going to be, how and small or compact, how they're going to be placed, that's if they're where you create a shape or design comes pattern. Comes Again, comes I would never say, heart, I want you to do this hairstyle. Style. This is the hairstyle I want to see on everyone abstract. in the world from now on. And I was like, please. If you're having a crazy no. day, you can leave those accents <laughs> down. Please, no. If it's a wedding, you can learn the crochet accent. And do it different. Please don't do it. Just take my videos and I see it. I'm impressed. Recreate them. I don't want hundreds of the same thing walking around. Oh, it'd be so boring. Add your own personal touch to it. Take those but crochets point, and put them somewhere else. Do, do something different than what you see here. If there was only that one makes the fun. That that the makes the world a fun place. Like makes makes students. hairstyles more fun that way. The same thing. And everybody adds their own unique touch to it. So boring visually unstimulating so sure copy this once once you got it next time you do it do it different do it creative put your personality into it put so even though this part you're working is into it has a lot of volume it's very large right takes so we could leave these down in the back looks i do nice. want more of a flower feel if it's I want a silly hair day a that'd be perfect. curly cue curly cues swirly flowery just and a regular so you'll day where she just wants to be a pretty pin sweet these, uh, crochets up. up. It does that. It gives it more of a flower feel, more best. of a loose, flowing, floppy things. touch. If you insert a bobby and pin, again, the rubber bands and bobby pins are kind of like the underwear of a braid or a hairstyle. So hide those rubber bands. Just if give them a little tuck. A tuck up, up, with tuck the it under. Hiding it. Hide the bobby pin inside the hair. Don't don't catch the outside of the hair. Slide the pin into the. And uh, the middle cover of the hair, the unsightly those parts. bobby pin ends will disappear. So cover you're not your have a bunch of butts, scalp bobby lines pin butts showing. Cover your rubber bands. So it's very hide your bobby pins. Fold, fold the end to hide the rubber band, and then slide the bobby pin into the hair without catching surface hair. And then, like magic, not only can they tell where or how you got your gathers, where or how you did your bun. They cannot tell where the accents begin or end because they don't see rubber bands or bobby pins. And it can make a big difference from a sloppy hairstyle that, like, I mean, it's almost like you can see it's underwear. It's not like the rubber bands and bobby pins aren't really underwear, and yet at the same time, they kind of are. Those are, those are the kind of things you want to hide. You can hide a part. And this is one of many, many no things you scalp can do line with crochet. It's like hiding a butt crack. You can and hide a bobby pin. It's like hiding your underwear. Of hundreds of accents you could have so used. Those here. crochets pinned up. It looks. Like I do things. love using massive, silk flowers, massive gems, down, which is pins. perfect if she had like so prom dress on. Anytime I get a chance, I definitely add outfit on. Sparkles or pretty. And I would encourage you to do the same. Maybe They're also great for an everyday school band. hairstyle. This is still showing. A fancy, it's a little big. Pins. You can always cover those up with a little decorative doodads. And I do love to use pearl pins and flowers. So there's no slips. It really makes that there. hairstyle pop. And it helps accent the whole thing, bring it all together, and make it look special. So that is your So classic. this is a classic cascade, cascade. accented. All classic components. Basic on basic the left. Basic accented, cascade, cascade accented.
And like I said before, these are use uh, different numbers strand numbers strings. examples, Oops. not different things that you can do with the classic Three form, strings. different accents Five that you strings. can use. Seven, eight, I encourage nine. you to really mix and match them. Go That's crazy. where the fun is. Those accents up, down. Thank you so much for watching. Thank today. you for joining us, and, and we will see, see you, you next time. time.